So in the last couple of videos, I have been showing you and talking about the spot healing brush. But as I've been clicking and selecting it, you might have noticed in the pop-up list, there is also a regular healing brush. Not a spot healing brush, but a normal healing brush. And in this tutorial, I want to show you the difference. So I'll go to File and Open. In Folder 9.5, Healing Brush Demo. I'm going to open up this image of my grandma, and she's got a lot of wrinkles. Okay, I want to make her look a little younger, a little more refreshed than these deep set wrinkles, these really baggy eyes. You can kind of see that sunken eye socket right there. It just doesn't look very flattering. So I want to touch her up, put a little uh, Photoshop makeup on, and make her look a little more refreshed. Okay, so again, a lot of professional photographers will do this kind of stuff, like wedding photos and things of that nature, where you get the uh, relatives. First thing you do is Command J. Then, the only part of Grandma's entire face that doesn't have wrinkles is this upper left corner of her forehead. And just from that little patch of skin, that's going to help me to retouch the whole face. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit. And then I'm going to press and hold down, fourth tool down on the right, and come down to the normal healing brush. Okay, the difference between these two is the spot healing brush, you just jump out and start using it. The normal healing brush works like the clone stamp. Okay, I'm going to hold control and option. We'll go a little bit bigger. And I have to option click the clean skin texture right here. Option click and then let go. Now I move straight down to a similar skin tone and I click and drag and I paint. Just a little bit. And what it's doing is looking at not only surface texture, but surface value. When I let go, it blends that value together. So the normal healing brush is kind of like um, the clone stamp tool, but with a lot less thought process on the part of the artist. Like notice right here, if I go to the clone stamp and I option click the bright and I paint over into the shadow, well, that's going to look pretty stupid. Okay, because the clone stamp is going to pick up exactly what I option clicked. Highlights painted on top of shadows. Doesn't blend. So I'll undo that. If I go to my normal healing brush, I can option click highlights, come over to the shadows and paint, and they will blend out with similar skin tones. So what I have to do is constantly jump back and forth. Option click on the left, paint a little bit to the right, come back. Option click on the left, paint a little more to the right. Option click on the left, paint to the right. Option click on the left, paint over on the right. Option click the left, paint to the right. And I want to constantly jump back and forth. Option click the left, paint on the right. Option click to the left paint to the right and you'll notice as I'm painting let me just do it down here in this darker part of her eye if I option click the eye and come up here you can see a little plus following my cursor just like I got with the clone stamp so you want to be aware of where that little plus is going so I'm going to undo that I don't want to option click right up here next to her hair and then paint up because now I'm going to have hair growing out of the middle of her forehead because that plus was going up into her hair and then it was repainting the hair down below. So I'll undo that. Okay, just be aware of where that little plus is following your cursor. So what I tend to do is go with similar values. Option click above the lighter skin, paint more light skin below. Option click above, paint down below, right in there. Option click above, paint to the right. And now it's going to start to blend some of those skin tones. So I can go in the middle of the forehead, not all the way over here. Option click, paint across. Option click, paint a little bit more across that forehead. 
option click above, paint all these little wrinkles right above her eyebrows. And I'm gonna keep jumping, keep option clicking, option click above, paint down below, option click above, paint to the right, option click on the left, paint on the right, option click above, paint down below. And I'm gonna keep going around here, constantly option clicking. And I'm even gonna get rid of some of the surface anatomy, like option click here and get rid of that deep dark shadow on the bridge of her nose. Option click above, let's smooth out some of the eyelid right here. Option click above, paint down below. Option click above, take out the big bags under her eyes right here. Option click above, because now I got a big forehead to sample from. So option click up there, paint way down here. Got plenty of room for that little plus to move around in her forehead. Option click above, we'll take out some of the skin tone right there. Option click above, paint over these wrinkles right around her eye right there. Gotta be a little slower there. I don't wanna take out her eyeball like that. That would just look really bad. So I'll undo that. Option click above, paint down below. Get rid of some of that detail right there. Option click, paint. Option click, paint. And the other thing, the other point is you do not wanna get rid of the wrinkle right where it attaches to the nose. That's what kind of grounds the nose to the face. So I can option click and go around this little wrinkle here, option click, maybe take out half of that wrinkle right there. But I wanna leave some of it attached to the tip of her nose or the ends of her nostrils there. So I'm gonna come around like this, but I wanna keep some of that attached to her face here. And I'm gonna option click, paint off to the side, option click, paint next to the cheek, option click above, paint down below, option click above, paint wrinkles down below, uh, option click above, paint some of these little wrinkle spots here, option click, paint, option click, paint, option click and paint I'm gonna slowly work my way around i don't have a big cheek to sample from so i gotta constantly go back and forth back and forth option click above paint over to the right option click above paint to the right option click above paint down below option click above like i said that forehead's gonna give me most of this and actually i hit some hair her eyebrow so let's option click above and take some of that hair back off of that cheek. That would look really bad. Okay, option click the cheek, paint down below. Option click and then paint. Option click and then paint. Option click and paint. Option click and paint. Option click, I think you get the idea, but this is what goes on in my head as I'm working. Option click paint. Option click paint option click paint and i'm just going to go down to her jawline i'm not going to worry about her neck that would take a lot more time because there's a lot of stuff going on in there i'm really just showing you the general idea of how you deal with wrinkles in a photo similar to this i just picked grandma because she had a lot of wrinkles and it gives us some good practice so option click paint option click on the right paint to the left, option click the right, paint to the left, option click to the right, paint to the left. A lot of option key being used here, folks. And we're getting pretty close here. Okay, the other thing I wanna caution you about is do not option click next to a difference in color like this, and then come up here, cause you're gonna hit that. Your plus is gonna hit that edge. What I would also not do is option click above and then try to paint right next to an edge. You can see how it just bleeds into her face. So you wanna avoid those edges if you can. Maybe option click and paint here, but not right on the edge. Cause this thing is pulling values from surrounding areas. So you don't wanna pull blue back into her face like a big bruise. 
Okay, and I'll go right up to the edges of her lips right there, take out some of these little creases here. And Grandma is looking very flat and bloated. There she goes. Nobody, and I mean nobody who's 87 years old is going to have no wrinkles. If they do, they've had a ton of plastic surgery and not in a good way. This just doesn't look natural. Okay, so the goal first is to take your normal healing brush and heal out all the wrinkles on a copy. Then all you have to do now is go to the opacity of that top layer and drag it back so you can kind of ghost out the top layer. I'll ghost it back to about 60% right there. So now an 87 year old person will have wrinkles in her forehead. She will have some wrinkles around her eye, under her nose, coming off the corners of her nose. She'll have a few wrinkles around the jaw. She just won't have deep set wrinkles. Here's the layer before if I turn this off. And now I turn it on. Off where these look really dark and very tired looking. Here they're still there. They're just not as prominent. If you think she needs a little bit more, lower the opacity down to 50%. Okay, here's before and after. She still has her aging. It's just putting a little more foundation and cover up on her. And she'll look a little more rested than so tired and haggard right there. Okay, great little touch up to add a little more life back into your portraits. Duplicate your layers, take out all the wrinkles, and then lower the opacity to blend that layer back into the original wrinkles. It's just halfway covering them up and your photos are going to look better.